there's been a lot of discussion lately about another newspaper that put out a story about cancer statistics and how. And it's caused a lot of people in the town to be concerned about this. And I'm wondering if you had a chance to look at those figures and tell us if people should be concerned and how. Sure. Well, I think that I saw the article that you're talking about as well. And I think one of the things that um, was unfortunately missing from this description um, it is not necessarily specific to how, but something that I think is really important for people to be aware of. And uh, that is, uh, that relates to um, just uh, statistics about cancer in general. Um, oftentimes people refer to cancer as though it's one disease. And in fact, the term cancer is a general term used to describe well over a hundred different diseases. And the reason that I say that in that context is because each of these different types of diseases are thought to have different sets of risk factors or causes, things that happen throughout a person's life that causes them to be diagnosed with one type of cancer or another. The second thing that I think is very important that was also missing, and it relates to cancer statistics, is, uh, and it's really one of the hardest parts of my job, and that is telling people how prevalent cancer is. Today, according to the American Cancer Society statistics, one in every two men and one in every three women will be diagnosed with some form of cancer during their lifetime. So those are very telling uh, but startling um, statistics. They certainly are. So I think having said that, um, as environmental epidemiologists or people that study disease patterns and, uh, and try to understand whether something unusual is going on within a, a given community, um, we look to see uh, if there are commonalities. Are the same types of cancer elevated? Um, and there are some certain types of cancer that do share some common risk factors. Um, unfortunately, uh, perhaps some of the, the, the cancers that have the greatest similarities are those that are largely smoking-related cancers. And in the case of Hull, uh, when we look at the most recent statistics, and these are data uh, from 2001 to 2005, we see that those that have the greatest level of significance, uh, those that, that are statistically significantly higher than the state, are three um, pretty common smoking-related cancers. Uh, they're lung cancer in females. It's larynx cancer in males. And then uh, bladder cancer. And the bladder cancer is in males. It's also a little high in females, but not quite as high. And one, one of the strongest risk factors, if not the strongest risk factors for all of these cancers, is cigarette smoking. And I, I would say that, you know, there are some environmental factors that can contribute. Um, in the case of lung cancer, you know, exposure to radon and or asbestos can also cause one to develop lung cancer. But what's even more difficult about the role that smoking plays is that when you get exposed to these environmental agents and you are a smoker, um, there's um, not just an additive effect, but what's called a multiplicative effect. So it's multiplied. Your risk of getting that particular cancer is significantly multiplied because you have two different agents occurring at the same time. That makes a lot of sense. Right. So, you know, the other cancer that uh, is no longer significantly elevated, but I know it's been high in the past in Hull, and again, knowing this community as well as I do, um, seeing melanoma elevated is not a surprise. We also see melanoma elevated in places like Marblehead. Uh, any of these seacoast communities uh, where people do have excessive exposure to the sun, um, and for many years, uh, people did not take the kinds of precautions um, that are taken today. And I know that myself. I grew up on a, in a seaside community on the North Shore in our state. And um, uh, 
I don't think I ever used sunscreen as a young child. I mean, we used to, people used to use baby oil. Yeah, and bake in the sun, they didn't know. Exactly. They put, uh, I remember my older sister with the, um, you know, the, the, the old Beatles album cover, and she'd have uh, tin foil on it. Oh, she had uh, baby oil on her face. Oh, that's awful. That's right, yeah. But, but, you know, we didn't know then what we do know now. And so I think the other thing that's important, an important point to bring out that um, people often forget is that cancer is not, generally speaking, a fast disease. When we see it diagnosed in children, that development period or latency period can be as short as two years. But for the most part, adult cancers can be anywhere from 15 to 40 years in their development. And so, you know, a 70-year-old person could have been exposed to an agent at age 30 that really played an important role in their cancer. And oftentimes, in the case of cigarette smoking, that's when the person started. It may also be when a person started working in an industry. Maybe at the shipyard or something Correct. like that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So what we're seeing today is uh, our rates of diseases that are elevated, for the most part, smoking-related cancers. But there are also cancers that take a very long time to develop. Um, and so, you know, whether or not a person lived in Hull their entire life during that period of time when exposure would have been important uh, is, an, is uh, you know, a factor that needs to be uh, examined. And then also, where did the person work? They may have lived in Hull for their entire life not been exposed to certain things that might be associated with a development of a certain cancer, um, and in this case, let's say lung cancer, but yet we find that they worked at the shipyard for 20 or 30 years. So, you know, again, um, I should mention that we have been asked, um, I believe, by the town manager in Hull, yep, go on the oath, right? if we would uh, prepare a very detailed summary of what we believe uh, might be important as it relates to cancer in Hull. Okay. Um, and we're in the process of doing that. Our office will release uh, sort of a short, either a short report or a very long letter okay. that addresses each of these types of uh, factors because they are important. And, and I think one of the things that I saw when I read that article um, and it's one of the things that jumped out at me. Uh, it looks as though the person, somebody may have called out our office as, as long as, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago. And if they did indeed tell one of our research analysts, and uh, way back then I could have been one of the people answering the phone. Right. Um, you know, if they described 20 different types of cancer, then the immediate response from an environmental epidemiologist would be to say that it doesn't sound environmental. Because, you know, again, we're looking for commonality. So does everybody have leukemia? Does everybody have brain cancer? Uh, does everybody have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? Are, are the diseases that are elevated those that we have uh, some um, suspicion that environmental factors might play a role? You know, looking at it right now, do you think that there is anything environmental? Do you think that it has more to do with maybe people's lifestyle, whether they smoked or were, you know, exposed to smoke or where they worked? 